and welcome to Books of Blood. My name is John, and once again we're going to be continuing with 50 years of horror fiction. The year is 1981. I have got five books here for you, so let's go ahead and get underway. Alright, first up we've got Hobgoblin, and this is by John Coyne. Ancient magic meets contemporary horror in this thrilling tale of a young man's obsession. Scott Gardner is already shattered by the demise of his character in a sword and sorcery fantasy. When his father dies at almost exactly the same moment, the line between nightmare and reality begins to erode. Scott and his mom attempt to start over by moving to Ballycastle, a medieval Irish manor house rebuilt on the banks of the Hudson. A new role-playing game captures Scott's imagination, Hobgoblin, in which he takes on the identity of the legendary Irish hero, Brian Boru. Before long, he's seeing a black anise, a terrifying creature of Celtic myth, darting about the estate. Scott plunges deeper and deeper into the dreamlike allure of Hobgoblin until more than just his sanity is at stake, and he is forced to rescue others from a dark power. And that is Hobgoblin by John Coyne. Okay, next we've got The Hunger, and this is by Whitley Strieber. Eternal youth is a wonderful thing for the few who have it, but for Miriam Blaylock it is a curse, an, ex an existence marred by death and sorrow. Because for the everlasting Miriam, everything she loves withers and dies. Now haunted by signs of her adoring husband's imminent demise, Miriam sets out in search of a new partner, one who can quench her thirst for love and withstand the test of time. She finds it in the beautiful Sarah Roberts, a brilliant young scientist who may hold the secret to immortality. But one thing stands between the intoxicating Miriam Blaylock and the object of her desire, Dr. Tom Haver, and he's about to realize that love and death go hand in hand. And that is The Hunger, and that is by Whitley Strieber. And of course that was also made into a movie. I believe it was directed by Tony Scott, which really surprises me. Uh, and that um, it starred Catherine Deneuve, I believe it was, Susan Sarandon, and, of course, David Bowie. All right. All right, next up, we've got The Woman Next Door by T.M. Wright. Christine Bennett has everything. Beauty, a loving husband, a new home of her own, everything but the use of her legs, paralyzed in a childhood accident. She's slow to make friends until she meets Marilyn, who lives next door. Marilyn, with her perfectly decorated home and her seemingly perfect family. Marilyn, with a dark, guilty secret in her attic, who becomes a very different woman behind locked doors. Christine may have everything to fear from the woman next door. And that is the woman next door. And that is by T.M. Wright. Hey, next up, we've got The Woods Are Dark by Richard Lehman. Neela and her friend Sherry only wanted to do a little hiking through the woods. Little did they know they would soon be shackled to a dead tree waiting for them to arrive. The Dills family thought the small hotel and the quiet town seemed quaint and harmless enough until they too found themselves shackled to trees in the middle of the night while they approached hungry for human flesh. And that is The Woods Are Dark by Richard Lehman. And I read The Woods Are Dark. It's actually a really good book. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Hey, last but not least, we have got The Hell Candidate, and this is actually written by Graham Masterton, but he is writing as Thomas Luke. All right, I found that out when I was trying to find uh, uh, photographs of the uh, book to post on the, uh, you know, to, to post here, you know. Uh, anyway, I opened my eyes. I wasn't dreaming. I was awake. 
and right beside me, Jennifer was panting and moaning and bouncing up and down on the bed. Okay, uh, I was getting there. I, uh, I stared harder into the darkness, chilled with fright, and against the dim gray light that filtered in through the closely drawn drapes, I saw an outline on top of Jennifer that made me cram my hand into my mouth to stop myself from screaming. It was a huge, bulky outline as dark as sin, but its eyes glowed slanted and orange like the eyes of a wolf, and on its head were two curved horns. It stank of stale incense and animal sweat, and it was grunting with grotesque delight. When businessman Hunter Peel decided to run for president of the USA, they said he didn't have a chance in hell, but they were wrong. Initially, he seemed pleasant and moderate, but then everything, then everything started to change. As his popularity grew, so did his ability to influence people, sending them weeping to their knees and seeing sights which no cameras could capture. And what of his opponents and the strange accidents which befell them? Indeed, Hunter Peel was not the man he once was. One of the denizens of hell has made a pact with him, and on his inauguration, all hell will be let loose, literally. And that is the Hell Candidate, and that is by Graham Masterton, writing as Thomas Luke. And that is going to do it for 1981. Until next time, thank you guys for watching, and as I always say, Take care and stay scared. Bye-bye.